Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thank you for joining us today on this uh, last webinar in March. Uh, and then, of course, also the last webinar of the first quarter. So interesting how we are going to move on to uh, a new phase of this 2016 in the second quarter. Before we dive into uh, what we can expect from the Forex market and other uh, instruments, first of all, don't be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience. It may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out more information about that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets are considered high risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. Plus, by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you're aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, so we're going to take a look at the charts in just a second. A lot of action happened since yesterday, and I think a lot of uh, interesting developments did occur. Um, you know, obviously throughout the trading day, there are some slower moments, but then there was also a lot of excitement at some points. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. First of all, though, I would like to get an idea if anyone traded yesterday. And if so, what did you trade? Uh, and if you didn't trade, just let me know. I'm just curious to get a feel, kind of, you know, what uh, what happened yesterday for you, and uh, maybe we can see, uh, talk about how to improve it, or I would like to uh, get some feedback from you. And if you didn't trade, that's no problem at all as well. I mean, there is uh, not the necessity to take any trades. So if you would like to uh, participate in that, please just write in the chat your feedback of the day, no trades, and if you did, what the trade was, which direction, and what the result was. Okay, so we can take a look and, uh, and discuss that. Regarding the calendar, we had uh, yesterday not a lot of things going on, but today we have Euro business confidence, we have inflation rate in Germany, and ADP on the dollar, or US, Otherwise, we have some green and yellow news events. You can check that out by going to the Forex calendar, by going to analytics and clicking Forex calendar. We can also take a look at the heat map as we always do. Top movers of today, we've got some stocks here, Apple, Microsoft above the 2%, Facebook too, market uh, recovering a bit to the upside here. As you can see, gold also making a continuation upside. Kiwi being one of the strongest, let's take a look at those pairs. Look at that, the Kiwi dollar really rocking here, uh, close to 2%. Pound also 1%, plus a lot of volatility. Euro New Zealand, Pound New Zealand downside. We see in a, a couple of yen pairs and your dollar as well. So that's always interesting. Uh, just in case you're not aware, you can always take a look and find more analysis, of course, by going to analytics and clicking on wave analysis. That's what I do always in the morning. Technical analysis. You can find uh, from Nenet often, of course, his analysis for the day, uh, or you can go to fundamental analysis. And there, Darren wrote yesterday, the devil's in the detail, and he's talking about quarter one. So take a look at that. I'm sure you'll find that interesting. All right. So you can find that all by going to analytics. Same thing, of course, you can find the trading platforms. You can find the web trader platform. You don't even need software, or you can use the MT4 Supreme Edition. And here you can see what products you can trade, what instruments you can trade uh, through Admiral Markets. Alrighty. Let's take a look, first of all, at the majors, starting with the euro dollar. So we did get the upside. That's why I was kind of asking, what did you trade yesterday? Because uh, if you if you were in the webinar yesterday, I was talking about euro dollar upside and pound USD upside. Uh, or actually, I should say, correct. I should correct myself. Euro dollar upside, uh, pound dollar. I was still on. You know, both both sides were potentially possible. I did say that depends on where the four hour candle closes. It closed definitely bullish, so that was the cue for upside, and certainly got a lot of upside. Euro dollar, pound USD were a lot of showed a lot of bullishness in yesterday's trading, and I think that yesterday's webinar in the morning. I was trying to to give you options how to trade that. So I think that it was a it was a good preparation for yesterday's trading. So I hope that perhaps for myself at least. So I hope perhaps that you know some traders 
manage to to use that advice as well maybe it's not attendance as advice but maybe you could tag along uh if you listen of course um to to what i'm doing and manage to to use that in your advantage so did anyone by any chance trade your dollar pound usd uh, to the upside or any other trades i see edith taking your dollar long dollar cash short and dollar yen short and still in those trades so very well done edith great job very very nice let's talk about that we had a massive uh, upside of course yesterday and uh i was talking about the fact that when the euro dollar was here that basically we shouldn't go shorting right and it's it's easy to get trapped in those emotions when you see price making a dash to the downside and starting to break uh, perhaps this bottom Right? It's easy to get trapped into that emotion and thinking, oh, the market is going to go down. Price is moving down as we speak. That's why, obviously, the market is, is, is very good in, in doing that. It doesn't do that on purpose. It doesn't have a brain uh, or it doesn't it tend to do that. The market is a neutral object, right? just like the wind. But this is how it triggers emotions in us. When price starts to fall, we get tempted to think, oh, oh, I guess we should be trading it to the downside. But we said clearly yesterday, don't trade it to the downside. There's support around the corner. It could stop. It might not stop. It could have continued, right? It could have. I'm not saying I'm not a fortune teller, right? That's not the point. The point is, though, that the chances of price continuing or stopping at that support do not really give a trader a uh, sufficient reward to take that trade to the downside. So it doesn't make sense to, to take that trade. We did say, though, if price shows any hesitation here, it still could be a good long. And if you use the five to six candle rule that I apply, then we had one, two, three, four, five, six candle. That would have been uh, a good signal for a long or even the fractal break here could have been a good signal uh, as well. Now, later on in the day, uh, you know, the, after this candle has been already posted, it's a bit late, so that might not have been good. But if you took this, if you had a pending order above these fractals, that could have been another way, perhaps, or uh, even these bounces here, these candles. Those could have been ways, but I mean, this is not something we discussed necessarily in the webinar. I'm just, of course, uh, looking now in in retrospect. Uh, what we did clearly say though was yesterday is a bounce here. It could be a Good reason for a bounce based off the support that we had in the past. So that worked out very well. Price reaching the top of that orange zone that we had on the chart. And now making kind of a, uh, a consolidation. So that's why you don't want to get trapped by your emotions. You want to stick to your, basically to your roadmap. You want to stick to your plan and understand where is where are the spots that you have an advantage you can see a clear distinct edge and you don't want to get swayed by the market, persuaded to trade into direction that doesn't have good odds or good reward to risk or a combination actually, right? So yesterday, um, that was a, a classical example. So with today, now we uh, basically have a very strong four hour candles like this. I would say that uh, I'm not sure if this is a master candle as yet. It's a pretty average candle. It's a, it's a decent candle, but it's not dominating. I would say that this is still the dominating candle. Very strong bullish candle on the daily chart. So we put a fib on that particular candle. Uh, we might get back to the 23 or 38.2 fib, right? 112.50, 112.70. In about six minutes, I'll have the pivot points for today. And that could be good bouncing spots for continuation to the minus 272 target and perhaps the minus 61.8 target at 113.80. Now, ultimately, price could even go further than that because if we put a fib from here to here, and let me change so that you can see a, a bit more difference between those fibs. Let's make that light green. The ultimate target could be 114.50 or 114.80 even, which is a minus 272 target 
and a minus thousand target of that daily fib. So for Carol, who was on a euro dollar long on the demo, uh, that's great. Uh, personally, I think that uh, aiming for 114, well, it depends how quick you want to get out. I think let's wait for the pivot points, actually. Okay, we'll make a decision about because we do have ADP later today. So it could be best practice to take profit before that event. Of course, the event could also accelerate the profit, but it could also wipe out some of that profit. So we'll discuss that, I think, in a few minutes from now. Uh, but we do have targets somewhere up in here. We just have to decide which one is best. For the moment, I, uh, I think a stop loss probably below the 61.8 FIB should be okay, depending on where the trade is taken. Uh, I think that putting a stop loss here, I don't think it will get that deep. I don't think the entire bottom is needed uh, on that particular trade. Or even the 50 fib could be enough as well. Uh, for new trades, as I said, I think at this moment, price needs to make a bit of a pullback first to the 23.6 fib or the 38.2 fib. Uh, I don't think trading it at the fibs is a great idea, but watching, for instance, 50-minute chart, letting price get back to that FIB and uh, letting it bounce and then taking a pullback here, I think is the best best course of action. Now, will we get that pullback? I don't know, because I'm already in lungs on the pound from earlier this morning and the Kiwi. So I'm not sure if the euro dollar will get the pullback. We'll give that pullback. Uh, who knows? It might not. We are getting a bit of a wick, I guess, in three minutes from now, if this week stands, it could be reason maybe for me to make it uh, a bit of a pullback, right? But uh, it's not very, very certain. It could just continue uh, like it is and start pushing and pushing. Now, with the euro dollar, I don't think the pullback was deep enough uh, to, to take that trade. I don't think that this particular sideways zone was... I, the pound had a two. Let me show you. But it was just a tiny difference why I thought the pound was a bit better. Uh, and that was that the 21 EMA had bent already for, for a decent amount of time. Whereas with the euro dollar, it really just tagged it for a second and then continued. So that's what, it's a minor difference, but that was one of the reasons that, from my point of view, made the pound USD break above this fractal uh, more interesting. All right, and also if you put a fib actually from here to here, uh, it tagged the 23.6 FIB. So it made a reasonably, a reasonable pullback. It wasn't very shallow, but it still reached uh, you know, that 23.6. Whereas the euro dollar, it's, it's, it seemed less ready. Also the break basically was right at the yesterday's high which is another factor I didn't really like for taking a trade to the upside on the euro dollar at that particular point. And I favored the pound USD. All right. So that's the break I took uh, earlier this, this morning. Now at this moment, the trade is, is moving well under its way and the breakout is pushing higher. So uh, I could probably move it to roughly break even if I wanted to, or at least below this fractal and reduce the risk. For those that are not in the pound USD, let's take a look at the hourly candle. I think that if the hourly candle closes like it is now in one minute, I think that's a strong hourly candle. I think a bit of retrace of that candle could be still warranted for a long, I think, uh, in my opinion. Uh, just a bit of retracement of that candle, and we could probably see a bounce and continuation. So we'll talk about that as this candle closes. All right, uh, regarding yesterday, I was talking about, sorry, let me turn this on. All right, um, regarding yesterday, I was saying, wait for this candle to be bullish or bearish because that will give us the clue for today, whether we get upside and downside. It's exactly what happened because it was actually showing bearish sentiment as the candle was live and it was not closed yet and it looked very bearish. And I said, that's possible because this could be an ABC. But wait for that candle to finish because if it closes as a bullish pin bar, then actually it could easily be a pullback and we might get a continuation. 
And that's what exactly happened. We had a pin bar on the four hour chart, but also a pin bar on the hourly chart right there. And uh, it was a pullback. I had this channel on the chart, got an exact bounce off the bottom. That was not necessarily a trade to take. Maybe a very advanced trader would do that, but th the better trade I think still was the break right here and uh, after the closure of those pin bars. I took it uh, on a 50 minute chart. I guess it doesn't really matter whether it's four hour, one hour, or 15, but I took it with somewhere in here. I don't remember exactly. Somewhere in here, upon the break of these fractals. And um, let's see, I can just take a quick look. Right about there. So it was actually a bit higher than I wanted to. Um, but uh, basically this candle, this strong candle above these fractals, that was for me uh, the main signal on a 50 minute chart at least. But of course I saw the one hour pin bar as well already. Uh, for those that waited for the four hour pin bar, that's fine too. I didn't wait for that, but that would have been fine too and would have been probably roughly the same entry actually. All right, so we got an hourly candle. Uh, bullish indeed close right up near the high as you can see just a, a pip or two away or maybe even less from that high so i think that uh, if we do get a retracement of that candle i think that there's a, a good chance of a bounce we might not even get it as you can see the price is seemingly looking as if it's continuing so um that might not happen but who knows let's see at the moment we're getting an impulse so for those that are didn't take the break here or even this candle it might be too late but maybe not because you never know you can always get a bit of a pullback let's see how the impulse behaves all right so from my point of view this this breakout is already on its way and it's doing fine let's talk about targets maybe on the pound let me go to my other screen and check. We got R1 at 144.90. That seems very far. All right. Well, I guess that, that will be the main target for the moment, 144.90. So I'll do 144. 80, 80, let's say. No, I'll go 144, 74. I don't like those, 72. I don't like those quarter numbers. All right, so 144, 72. I'll be targeting 144, 72. Euro dollar, let's take a look. Your dollar has 133.50 in R1. And, well, it depends. Uh, I'm not in this trade at the moment, so it really depends how one wants to, how long one stay, wants to stay in this trade. I think 133.50 is, is, you know, definitely a decent target. That's the R1. It's a uh, to mid level, but obviously you could still pass that the R1 and maybe reach 133.75 or 114 today. But I think if you want to be out on a conservative side, I think 133.50 is is uh, is a conservative target. The R1, right? I don't think that is an aggressive target. Price is already above the M3, so that resistance is out of the way. So I think that really little stands in the way until 133.50 as far as I can see at least. So I don't think there's, I think that's a very conservative target. Now, if you want to aim further or you want to see how this day develops, of course, I can understand that. But that's the most conservative target, I think, at this moment, 133.50.
So uh, that is uh, the euro dollar upside target for those that are in that. Morning, Beverly. We're just talking about um, the trades from yesterday. Did you take the euro dollar? We talked about the euro dollar upside here. Pound dollar, full pin bar here, and four hour pin bar. And uh, I'm not in the euro dollar, but I am in the pound. I took it yesterday and again today. But I'm not in the euro dollar, although the euro dollar did nice, nicely bounce off the support. But I like the pounds just a tad better. So let's talk about some other pairs. Dollar yen uh, did break this channel finally. It really retested this resistance, but didn't break it. Finally made a downside. I was thinking about actually trading uh, right in here, actually, this particular short. Then I was about to take it. Uh, then I didn't. Then I actually um, was, was, was about to take it again, and I really was hesitating. But I eventually didn't because I looked at the four-hour chart, and from my point of view, it was still too much of a reversal trade. I know that it was actually with the trend on the higher time frame, but I decided just to wait. I had, I think, still other pairs on mine, so or in uh, in trades. I'm not sure exactly, but I skipped it. Now I wish, of course, obviously that I took it, but never mind. That did move down a lot. That was the break right there, and um, there was a fractal right here. Price moving below that, a big fall, and we did get the turn and break. So anyone who's in that trade, great job. At the moment, I don't see much to trade, though. I think that price would need to make some kind of bear flag for me to uh, to get interested. So that was the uh, the trade. At the moment, I don't see any new trades. Yeah, yeah. I actually the very very indeed uh, annoying sometimes, but um, that's okay. I I think that let's see. I think it was a bit later in the day too. When was it? Yeah, it was a bit on the late side already. So it was a close to evening. So that was maybe another factor. Uh, let's see. Pound yen. Let me get rid of this fib. All right. So pound yen. Ah, I, I now remember why I had that fib. I put this fib on from here to here. I said, look for a bounce to these fib levels right 38 50 fib so that's where i took it i took the pound yen somewhere here around here and uh we got good upside we got a, a pretty decent move up to the minus thousand target right so there was okay space for a decent uh, continuation it didn't move very very far but not bad it was a bit choppy too but ultimately, I mean, there was nothing wrong with going along here. There was still plenty of profit potential for people to, for traders to grab. So that was uh, that was great. So perhaps uh, you took that trade. That Beverly was in that trade. And for me, the reason for that trade was we had a clear double correction here, a clear sideways box, clear momentum to the upside. Remember that on the four-hour chart, right? We were looking at this momentum to the upside. And why why could not why could that not continue? Right was the continue was the uh, thought, and it did it did push through. Got a good follow through on that with a couple of good four hour candles, um, and that was the reasoning. So we got basically a continuation of that momentum. We had momentum here. We had a clear sideways box. We had a bit of a dip here, and then a bounce. And as, as soon as the uh, price basically started breaking this these tops, that could have been an entry, but we, or at least I, managed to get a bit in earlier, just before that break, uh, as I was anticipating that the continuation. One of the reasons was just because uh, basically we already made a double correction, right? One, two. So then typically, well, you could still get a third one, but obviously eventually the, the chance of a breakout is increasing. All right, regarding the pound yen now, we got another pullback right to that same support level, in fact. But I'm not as big a fan of the pound yen at the moment as I was yesterday because the dollar yen is pulling, is pushing down, and the pound is pushing up. 
So the pound yen is, is maybe still slightly going up because the pound apparently more of a factor than the yen side at this point. But uh, therefore, I think the pound USD is better. But the pound yen, maybe just that the yen side is, is, is not as, uh, as interesting at this moment. For those that are in the trade already, though, let's see. I think you could be aiming for a, for a nice uh, target if you want to stay in that long, at least. This could be the main target, the minus 272 target. But that's a big target, obviously. Let's see. A smaller target could be... one sixty three twenty four. Let me check the pivot points. Ooh, the pivot points are not that uh, spread out. 163.06 is R2. So probably the minus 272 target is, is more than we can wish for probably at this at this moment at least but you never know things of course can obviously push a lot further than we expect this is an intraday let's say intraday target if you're swing trading uh, that could be totally different then you might want to hang on to the 166.50 all righty moving on to aussie and kiwi Aussie yesterday we were talking about that uh, the price is yes or Monday I was taking talking about upside I'm getting my words really mixed up today sorry about that <laughs> uh, we were talking about upside here then uh, price kind of filled about halfway hooked back to that same trend line and we got a pin bar at the trend line now I didn't trade that because I was really in the pound pound yen and New Zealand yen. But that could have been a signal. A pin bar at the trend line at the bottom of a triangle like that uh, is not a bad bad sign. So perhaps you took that trade and price nicely moving up to the resistance trend line and breaking above that. All right. So yesterday we had to break above this trend line. So I took the trade on the, uh, the Aussie. It's not going that great as yet earlier today. With this 15-minute candle, basically we had a decent correction, ABC correction, and then we had a 15-minute candle um, kind of breaking that sequence. So that was, for me, an interesting signal that I thought uh, is worth trading after the bullish break, remind you. So ABC correction after a bullish break, after a very strong momentum, those are pretty good setups because then the likelihood of a continuation uh, is, is just very much in uh, my favor. So the trade is going well. I mean, I mean, it's not going anything bad. It's just that the amount of pips up is, is not a lot. It's about 20. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with the trade as yet. Kiwi, the same thing. But that one is doing a bit better in terms of pips at least. Uh, that was up almost 40 just a, a second ago. All right, same thing here, correction and a 50-minute candle. Same thing, strong momentum as well. All righty, now in its entirety, you can see that price is actually right of resistance and we're getting an ascending wedge. We had basically a slow upside at this moment, and uh, but we had momentum here. This was a correction because it stopped at about the 61.8 fib. And more importantly, if you look at the daily candle, you can see a very, very strong daily candle. So the chances of uh, continuation are just very, very high. Uh, if not now, then certainly after a small retracement to the 38 or 23.6 fib. Same like the euro dollar, basically. All right, but it already broke yesterday's high, so I don't think that it has to do that necessarily. But if it does, it could still be a good bouncing spot.
All right, dollar cat is also breaking. It's all the same story. Dollar weakness, basically. Dollar weakness here, break. We talked about the triangle as well. Look out for this triangle. We got the break, pullback. That could have been short or anywhere here could have been a short or here. And you got the dollar weakness against the cat as well upon the triangle break that we were talking about. And this morning there was again here two an ABC correction, all basically the same pattern. Sorry if I'm repetitive, but that's basically just what happened. ABC patterns after impulse and then the break of those patterns, you get you're getting the continuation as we speak. Now, how much continuation remains to be seen? That could be it, and it could turn back up now. So I gotta be careful with that uh, side of things. And that's why I don't think necessarily maybe now is a good good time to trade it because uh, the break already happened. All right, so all the same pattern. Dollar cat, Kiwi, Aussie, Pound USD, Euro USD. We all see the same dollar weakness yesterday. Uh, we see dollar weakness, we see pullback, and we see continuation. And we see pullback throughout today's Asian session, and we see a breakout. Everywhere, same story in the dollar. All right, Pound Odd did make the upside up to the 61.8 Fib. And uh, got to that target, got to 190, and then turned. So I think it was wise from Beverly not to put that trail to stop. You can see if we would have put it, if she would have put it above the minus 272 target, it would have got knocked out. Even just putting it above 190 would have been very, very close. Got to 190.01, hit the target, and then turned back down again. So it made a zigzag indeed as expected, and showed engulfing twins. So now I think, you know, against the Aussie, I don't think that necessarily bulls are back in control. Obviously, there's a bit of indecision here. Considering the engulfing twin on the four-hour chart, I think that, um, and yesterday's bearish candle on the daily chart, I think that uh, there is a good chance that the bears might regain control. For that to happen, though, we probably need to break below these bottoms. And that could be a new trade, a break, pullback, continuation. Might offer new setups for myself uh, today or tomorrow or this week. So that's still pending. That's still possible. I think that, um, that, uh, that definitely could happen. The other scenario could be because we do have divergence between these bottoms, I think, or not. No, we don't. All right. But we did have on the daily. No, we don't. Well, then that could be it. If we don't have divergence, if I just wanted to say, if we do have divergence, there could be a chance that price uses the 21 EMA to make a rally up to the tunnel, the long-term moving averages indicated by purple, and the minus 1,000 target, right? And uh, perhaps then turn again back down. But considering that there is no divergence, there's probably the higher chance of, of downside continuation, actually. Pound New Zealand, interesting because we said yesterday, probably not going to break if we see pound strength, right? If we see pound weakness, it'll probably break. Well, we did have pound strength, obviously, pound USD going up, pound yen going up, and pound New Zealand going up. But pound New Zealand didn't go up that much, right? It only went up to a challenge these resistance levels, and then when the pound actually took a pause uh, in, its, in its upside momentum, that's when the pound then started to fall, and it did break with a, with a massive candle and then went sideways. If anything, I would say this is set up for downside, but I like the Kiwi dollar today this morning better because I still think that I was, we will see pound strength in the pound dollar, so I thought that the Kiwi, therefore, was better. New Zealand dollar than the pound New Zealand. But we do see the pound New Zealand is moving down as well. All right. Uh, yesterday I took the Kiwi uh, yen based on this candle. I said there was a retracement of that candle, and that just could be a light retracement within this momentum. We see a series of bullish candles. We see within that series that recently 
that the most recent candle, closed candle, was very, very uh, bullish, was the biggest candle within that series, and had a close near the high. So there is a decent chance of continuation, not a guarantee, but a decent uh, good chance, I would say. So when price retraced that candle halfway, I took it, put the stop loss below, I think, this candle low, or maybe even this candle, and um, took profit at the, at the pivot points and got out around 77. As you can see, price went a lot further than that, so sometimes trail stopping is better. But I had an intraday trade. If one would have trail stopped it, I think the stop loss is still here. Because these are small candles. You don't want to tra trail stop small candles. You want to trail stop decisive candles. This is a decisive candle. This is a very decisive candle. And this is probably going to be one. And it's certainly starting to look like that. And the Kiwi is really accelerating. I see on the Kiwi dollar that I'm up about 62 at the moment. So I can see that the Kiwi is really, really pushing. So we see that um, the New Zealand yen is one of those. And the Kiwi dollar, probably the euro New Zealand, pound New Zealand, the same thing. But I'm only in the Zealand dollar. Yesterday, I took the New Zealand yen from about here to about here. But as you can see, if you sometimes can uh, translate an intraday trade into a swing trade, uh, it might be better off. But you know, that's always in retrospect. It was intended as intraday trade from my pers perspective. So uh, that's fine. But you can see how you can use your simple four-hour candles as a retracement to trade an ongoing momentum. And it's still pushing, right? Yesterday, I was actually thinking about trading the Euro-New Zealand, but I was just a tad too late. Um, there was a beautiful, actually, move away from the tunnel, as you can see, pull back to the tunnel, and it aligned itself so beautifully with support level right there. And we had a bit of a triangle here, as you can see, and a break below the 21 EMA band, a good gap between these moving averages, and we get a break below those fractals. A beautiful continuation right there. Then we got a, a ABC correction and again a break below the 21 EMA band. This is the first correction, this is the second correction, and you see often after the second correction, that's when you get the bigger continuation. So here too, the Euro didn't set up well, just like the Pound didn't, but uh, I didn't take it on all these pairs, I just took it on the uh, Kiwi dollar myself. So same story. But really, we're getting a big continuation on, I don't know why, but. A lot of uh, Kiwi weakness. All right, so, or st strength, sorry. The other way around. Um, yeah, odd, odd New Zealand, we're talking about that yesterday too. This bear flag, right? Good momentum, bear flag break around here, occurring on Monday uh, evening. And price accelerating and getting another box, basically, and another break. So there's really a lot of momentum going on. I did say there's a chance of a bounce if price gets to the FIB, the 38.2 FIB. And it kind of made a box just in between these FIBs, awkwardly, and is now breaking below that. So I would not, you know, be careful with that idea, just wait. I wouldn't even, I would probably not even think about it for the moment because it, it looks too, too bearish, too impulsive at the moment. Alrighty. Um, so let's take a look at the majors again. All right, your dollars, small little wick, ultimately not uh, that impressive. Apparently, pound USD approaching the minus 272 target. That could cause a bit of a bounce. So I think that this is one of those morning momentums, and I think there's always a good way to catch that in the New York session. Wait for retracement. Wait for this five-minute AO to get back to the zero line. Wait for price to get about 50 FIB, I would say, uh, typically, or the 38.2 FIB. 
price will start to make often enough will make a bull flag like this and i think that then a break and continuation is likely now the adp does come into mix here so we don't know how the adp could respond price might uh, do something like this make a bit of a bull flag because of adp make a spike down and then you can see a quick recovery rally after the news event is over that could something like that could happen for instance but considering typically on average now a news event could always change that but on average when you see a momentum like this in the morning uh if you're not in it and that happens to me sometimes too by now i'm in it but sometimes i'm not i just wait for the retracement Wait for this oscillator to get to the zero line and try to get the New York rally. Is that a guarantee? No, but it happens very, very often, in my opinion, at least. Um, does it sometimes fail? Maybe we don't get the continuation. Sure, I mean, it's not a guarantee that London is up like this so strong and that New York must always be like that. No, but I think there's a good chance, though. Ooh, that's a really big bar on the Kiwi, especially especially Kiwi dollar, <clears throat> and especially the 50-minute chart. So how about targets on the Kiwi? I'm not sure if anyone is in it, but let's take a look. We already broke above the R1, so I think there's a fair chance of getting to the M4, which is 69.50. Did we reach that already? Let's see. Oh, we're already close to that already, actually. Sixty-nine fifty-seven is the target. The M4. So it depends. It all depends how fast you want to get out. I think if you're in that trade, I think uh, if you want to get out fast, sixty-nine fifty is a decent target. If you think um, you have more patience, then maybe trail stopping it and aiming for sixty-nine eighty is is good. Even taking profit now, I know it might sound funny, but it's you know if. If you have a 30 pip stop loss and you're up 70, it's it's not a bad trade, All right? But there's of course a chance that it could continue. Um, I just took profit actually, a bit of profit at least because uh, 70 pips sounds good, but I want to leave a bit on for uh, for the potential to for price to get to 69. 57 and 69.80 are the pivot points. From a FIB point of view, we're looking at 69.57 as a minus 61.8 target. Let me correct this FIB. All right, there we go. Well, if we do it that way, then uh, I'm not sure if this is the best fit, but let's let me try probably it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we see minus 61.8 target. This is a target actually, minus 272 target. So that could cause price, despite the momentum, it, ca it could cause a bull flag. And later today, we might see the continuation to the minus 61.8 target at that 69.86 indeed. So, you know, that's something to remain, that remains to be seen, but uh, this is bull flag and upside. But if there is a bull flag, there's a good chance of that, depending on uh, when the news event uh, exactly occurs, right? Dollar yen still pushing, pound yen, therefore kind of, it is pushing up, but the last couple of candles, not too much. That's because pound is really pushing, but uh, the dollar yen is falling. So, all right, pound, let's take a look at pound. And 
I got a TP at the moment at 144.72, as I said. Price is now at 144.48, so 20 more pips to go or something like that. At the moment, I'm not too worried. You can see momentum is on my side, and I think that uh, I could trail stop even using this 15-minute candle right here. That's the dominant candle on the 50-minute chart. <clears throat> it's taken on the 50-minute chart, so I think that makes the most sense. So I think moving the trail to about 144.15 and locking in some profit there is, is a good thing. I can't lose. I have some profit in the pocket, and I'm aiming for some more pips. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the Aussie now. Here, too, a dominant candle. We'll trail that, this dominant candle right here. Put the stop loss below that. Just in case things turn, I don't think that I would like to stay in the trade if price starts to break below that at this moment. So that's 76.45. Also locking in some profit. Dollar CAD. Same story. Just stop above. 130.51 probably also reducing the risk and locking in profit or 53 same story all of those basically dollar pairs as Beverly said have uh, seen acceleration so it's the same story if you want to if you want to get the risk off the table then I think a 50 minute candle like that is, is certainly a very uh, logical approach now, with the Kiwi, the candle was that big on a 50-minute chart that you might even want to think about taking profit here, at least partially, as I did, and moving to trail because uh, it, it's quite an unusual big candle for, for a Kiwi 50-minute chart. So I don't think there's necessarily a must for price to continue. It could. It could easily do that. But taking a bit of profit at this target, I don't think is a bad idea and maybe to rest at this target all right so sorry for if that was a bit boring but it was uh if you're not in those trades but um let's continue <clears throat> that's the third time i'm deleting the fib somehow it's always back it comes back all right, let's take a look. Pound Swissy, sure. <clears throat> let's do that. Pound Swissy. One forty one fifty three, okay. One forty fifty eight. All right. So which time frame did you take? Two weeks. So that was probably a daily chart then. Uh, yeah, pounds we see. Well, basically, we were looking at the, the channel yesterday, and it didn't break uh, to the downside. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at price around here, and it was making that attempt, right? But we, it was actually the pound dollar that did the same a little uh, fake out in a way, right? The dip down looks like it's breaking, but oh, no, moving up. And uh, we were actually, I think, saying the same thing yesterday. I didn't trade this particular one, but we got an engulfing twin here that did signal some upside of about 70 pips to the upside. We got a correction, and we're moving up again within this channel. So as far as I can see, four-hour chart is still in this, this bullish channel, <clears throat> still in this momentum. On a daily time frame, though, we still have bearish momentum. Uh, there are two reasons why I think it's still bearish momentum. One is the master candle here, this one. Uh, the high has not been broken yet. Uh, two, I think that uh, five candles, one, two, three, fourth, this is the fourth candle. So basically, or fifth maybe, that's four or five, that has not broken this bottom. So there's still a chance that this is a retracement that the fifth or sixth candle could break this bottom and we could see that continuation. It doesn't seem as likely maybe, of course, because we do have now a couple of bullish candles as well. 
Um, but I think that from that point of view, uh, this still is a good chance that price could find resistance here and, and make a turn and break that channel to the downside. So at this moment, probably, <clears throat> let's see, where you have the stop loss, which would be above this fractal, I think makes a lot of sense. If you want to lock in more profit at a reasonable spot, then it would be this candle high, I think. Uh, yes, that is a good point. This is a double bottom as we speak. Why? Because we had two candles here. So this is a fractal and this is a fractal. There was a small little break, but that break was only, well, what would it be? Probably a few pips. Let's take a look. Low is at 18, 137.18. Here it is at 24. The difference is six pips. Technically speaking, if the break is less than 15 pips, it's double bottom. So it is a double bottom, but the question is, will that double bottom break? It still could break, obviously. Um, it doesn't have to be a reversal pattern necessarily uh, because this could just be, we got a trend line right here. Let me draw that. So it could be an ascent or descending wedge, excuse me. And the uh, price might uh, make a dash up, hit this resistance and still turn. Or it could do this. How strong this double bottom will be or turn out to be? Let's take a look at weekly chart. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth candle. So even the weekly, I think, is still in this down momentum. So that's favors downside. Monthly chart is clearly bearish. We'll end, uh, this candle will end in one and a half days. So I think a, a stop loss above last week's high, definitely a good spot to keep your keep that stop loss perfectly. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that trend line is important indeed. This piece of confluence there, if, if that doesn't hold and basically this top where the last week's high doesn't hold, then, then it's a different ball game here. And then in that case, this channel is, uh, is will probably be a part of a new trend or at least part of um, a bigger retracement. Alrighty, folks. So, any other pairs that you would like to take a look at? Regarding the dollar yen, by the way, one thing I think that I didn't discuss that much recently. By all means, if you have other pairs that you would like to take a look at, please let me know. Regarding the dollar yen, uh, we had engulfing daily twins here. We had engulfing four hour twins here. Uh, we had uh, engulfing hourly twins here and a break here. So, Anyone who's in that trade, great job, because I think it could really push further than we, we imagined. Why? Because we had a triangle here that was neatly broken. I think this was a very persuasive push, but still part of a bigger correction to the downside. So if that indeed does unfold, then we do get an ABC rally, or I should say uh, zigzag, bear zigzag rallies to the upside, then uh, we might see 110 or 108.75 or 107.50. So there's a lot of scope, I think, here, space for downside. So Edith, great job for taking that trade. I don't know where you took it, but uh, there were certainly some options here. And I don't know what I was thinking yesterday that I didn't take it. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's not that bad. But obviously, um, it was um, a good trade. For, for Edith. Let's see, Beverly, dollar yen, where would you take profit on a short? Great job, Beverly. Let's see, 129, 112.95. Excellent. Took it on this candle, the break, this candle probably. 
nicely pushing below that uh, trend channel. Well, I would uh, think 110 is a good swing trade profit taking, but even 107.50, it uh, it might uh, break this this double bottom and start making uh, lower lows. If you want a more conservative target, then just aiming for the 110, 111, 110, 111, right area. All right. Always fun to see such a such a massive movement so early in the, in the morning, especially if you're in it. But uh, I think that considering this momentum, the New York session is going to have some interesting setups. But I might be I mean, don't want to ex exaggerate that. You never know with ADP, but typically I think that there could be a good follow through. Maybe some of our pairs. Let's take a look at uh, odd yen, for instance. Yesterday, price was here, made a bit of a dip, still made a rally, made of a dip, now making a rally again. Uh, I don't know. Maybe upside if, if it hooks back again. See if there's something more interesting to discuss. Let's see. Pound odd is breaking as we speak. Let's take a look at that. We're breaking these fractals. I think if this candle closes like that in 18 minutes, a bit of a pullback could be a good short as a as a swing trade on the pound odd. Otherwise, I think it's all the same story, really. There's nothing much to discuss. Oh, yeah, the pound cad. I'm not sure if we talked about it yesterday. But anyhow, price is at the 38.2 fib and at the moving average long term at this top and bottom. So it could be a bouncing spot. If it does make a bounce, I think it could go up to the 50, then make a rally down again to the minus 272 and 50, 50 fib confluence. We got momentum here, so I think we could see a, a zigzag pattern uh, develop. So from that point of view, this could be a bouncing spot because it is at the 38.2 fib. It's not behaving that so much at the moment because we do have divergence. We do have a double bottom, but the rally here has been quite weak. So probably the price will need to, uh, let's see. I think we probably need a break of this resistance to get more clue or information that will get upside on this pound cad and will get that bigger reversal uh, up to that 50 fib um, on the daily chart or weekly chart right well first thing 38.2 fib to be honest and then maybe 50. Uh, pound uh, sorry gold did make a uh, a huge upside indeed let's take a look at that good idea we saw that gold was in the heat map, doing very well, very very, uh, very bullish day. Seems like I'm getting all these phrases totally <laughs> the opposite. I don't know why today my brain is uh, uh, not coordinating the phrases correctly here. Bullish day, obviously. We see a pretty big range, but I think that considering the two dip correction, that this particular bullish day indeed has more value. So I do think it's a good signal for a continuation rally to the upside. Looks like a clear ABC correction on this four hour chart. We don't have divergence between these bottoms, but not all ABC corrections do need that, right? It's not a must for an ABC correction. Sometimes the wave C can be more powerful than the wave A. Alrighty, 
So what could be a good way to trade it? Let's take a look. Well, the pullback and break has already occurred and we're at yesterday's high. So probably now is not a good moment, in my opinion. But if it would be nice if the candle closes above this resistance point, if it shows some kind of candle like this, for instance, on the four hour chart, close to what we have now, and then a retracement of that candle about halfway could be just a good moment for a momentum, a bullish momentum continuation. That probably is, I think, the best way to, to treat that. I took some more profit, by the way, on the other dollar pairs because they did reach the Kiwi, uh, reached the M4 and shows a wick, by the way. And the Aussie is showing a wick at the R1 on a five minute chart. So just let you know, I took profit on those pairs. Considering the momentum, I think that that could be it. I mean, we're at pivot points. We see some pin bars. On, I know it's a five minute chart, but still we see some pin bars. That, Maybe I'm too too early on that. Maybe it does continue, but for me, it, the profit is enough. So I just wanted to tell you that. In the meantime, I close my trades on those pairs. Okay. Uh, anyhow, back to this to this gold. Uh, that could be just a, a good way of, of catching a continuation, basically. S&P and NASDAQ, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ, sorry, and FTSE all having some bullish pressure, but uh, the American stocks, a bit power, more powerful than, uh, than the English one. Some good bullish days here. I'm very curious how they will respond to, to this resistance zone. All right. Regarding, now I think we looked at all the pairs. Dollar index making a pullback and now very strongly falling, of course, but there's still a lot of support down here. So that's not something we want to underestimate. I think that that could seriously uh, be a strong support zone that could easily uh, create a bounce on uh, the dollar pairs. So anyhow, that's basically what the live market is telling us now. I don't have anything to add. I just wanted to maybe uh, share one or two things on four-hour charts. Basically, I think even if, if one is trading intraday, I think it's a good time frame to look for intraday trades. I know that not many people maybe do that. I'm not sure. But I think the four-hour chart, four-hour candle specifically, basically, because not the whole chart is really that valuable for intraday trading. But specifically, the candle of the four-hour, I think, could be very, very useful to give an indication what the upcoming session or next session uh, could look like. And the most, of course, obvious example was yesterday on the pound USD, how you can use a candle to, to get a bit of uh, information about the sentiment that uh, could happen, right? Here, this candle showing the potential for upside. Here, another candle, and we got a retracement and another upside. So I just wanted to, for today's strategy session, <clears throat> because we didn't talk about strategy as yet, 
uh, although uh, today's webinar is focused on that, uh, I think that that is, you know, an important thing to to keep an eye on. I don't think it, there's any anything wrong with really keeping a, a close eye on how those four-hour candles develop. We might lose track of that as we're in the heat of the battle, as we're trading on smaller time frames. You know, we kind of lose lose sight of that and might just forget about the whole four-hour world. But just zooming back once every four hours and seeing, okay, how did all of those 50-minute candles impact that four-hour candle? How does the candle look like? How big is that candle? How is that candle size in relationship with other candles? Um, what kind of sequence of bullish or bearish candles do we have? Or do we do not have any sequence? Where does the candle close end up in relationship to the high and low? Uh, are there any wicks? So all these things will give us a, a clue about uh, the impact on the next session or, or this session. So I think that it's always very valuable. Let's take a look at the euro dollar yesterday. Your dollar made a, a downside here. Now that particular candle did not necessarily give any information about a bounce. That maybe showed uh, actually a bit of bearishness, but there was a bit of wick, so I think it was a, a neutral kind of candle, uh, considering the fact that we had a break to the upside here and a, a bullish support here. I don't think that that was a particular candle to, to go short on. Uh, but this candle obviously shows engulfing twins, roughly speaking, in any case, a strong bullish candle, and indeed that candle low, nicely held, we got a retracement of that candle. So halfway, that could have been a, an interesting entry, and you got the continuation. So obviously yesterday we had some good examples. Now the Aussie is maybe not a good example because it was such a strong candle, we didn't even get a retracement of that candle. So, uh, but if one takes the candle close right here and puts a stop loss there, then uh, you can easily put that at break even already, right? Pao Yen. Let's see how this candle closes, right? If it's bullish, that could be engulfing twins too. Could be another signal of Pao Yen upside. But I. I'm very cautious with this yen side because I, I think that the dollar yen can really make a serious push down. Uh, as you can see, that's one of the reasons why I don't like the pound yen upside, and uh, we are seeing a bit of retracement now. China, I think you get the point. It's it's uh, nothing out of this world. What I wanted to share with you today is just wanted to make a small point here about the value of four-hour charts. That's about it, really. I think that these couple of examples probably give already a good indication of that. So, but if you have questions, by all means, please let me know. Otherwise, in the meantime, uh, let me tell you that uh, tonight, then it is going to take a look at why trading currency crosses is, is, is beneficial. And understanding the flow of price and its communication, uh, we have a webinar on that tomorrow evening at 4 p.m. GMT time, which is 5 p.m. UK time, which is 6 p.m. Central European time. So I hope to see you then and there. If, uh, if you're looking for some interesting info, you can check out the Traders blog too. Nenet wrote a, an article, Top 5 Myths That Keep Women From Investing. And I wrote about considering probability can liberate your trading. So take a look at that. That could be interesting for you. We got a lot of info here on the Admin Markets website. Beverly took some profit on the pound yen trade this morning, was up about 40 pips, but still happy with that. Obviously, yes, very good. 40 pips is good for intraday trading, even on pound yen, really. It's a nice job, really. Uh, any intraday trade, 40 pips is, is a good. Now, for pound yen, of course, there is a bit more volatility, so that could be more like a one-to-one -one trade, but that's okay. Even if it's less than one-to-one, -one, point is that you're not necessarily aiming for less than one-to-one. -one. That's a whole different story. right? If we aim, if we have a TP that's less one-to-one, -one, then we know for sure we cannot get more than that. 
Uh, whereas if we try, we take a trade, but we aim for something more, but the market just doesn't show that it can get there. It's showing signs of weakness. Then that's okay to take less than we, we were planning to because we are taking into account the new information. So that's a great job. So this is the 15 minute candle that I was worried about. We're well, not worried about, but where I took profit off. And that might be indeed the reason for or the starting spot for a bull flag. It might not. For me, it was uh, yeah, reason enough for me to, to take that profit. And as you see, the Kiwi was a bit too early uh, when at the minus 272 target, or it's easy to say in retrospect, but you can see it did eventually push. And it, there's a good chance it could get to this target, but um, let's see. Later today, definitely. Not sure about right now, but. Oh, definitely, Beverly, if, uh, if you have that, Gut feeling, it's sometimes good to follow. Gut feeling is always a bit difficult because do you follow it or not? Uh, obviously, if the gut feeling is totally against our training plan, 99% of the cases, it's probably not good to do that. Um, maybe I should say 100, but okay. I think that 99 is close enough. Uh, there could be always an exception. In... Uh, in many cases, though, it's still a it's still a good warning signal for us. It all depends. I think if um, obviously if it happens too often and you're getting a gut feeling every single ten seconds uh, about staying in, closing, then obviously this is not a gut feeling, but it's more of a fear factor that's playing into our minds, and we're getting a bit tricked, kind of to. You know, to, to, to think these things. If it happens like occasionally after the trade has developed and you got, you know, a sort of sentiment about what's going on, then a gut feeling could be very, very useful. So that gut feeling, it's an interesting topic, actually. Like at what point is it useful? What point is it counterproductive or destructive, actually? And actually, it could be both. And it just depends on who, when, where, how often, and all those things. Beverly says, I follow it only if it aligns with logic. And that's very good advice indeed, definitely. All right, folks. Well, I uh, thank you everyone for, for being here. Wish you all good trading. I hope to see you uh, later today, tomorrow, next week again. Um, and let me know if you're in any trades next time, if you are uh, thinking about trades, for me, that's all very interesting stuff to get more feedback from you about uh, your trading. I'm just interested to see how you're doing. So uh, next week, if you, uh, if you feel ready for it, by all means, feel free to share that just like Edith and uh, Carol and Beverly did. And uh, would love to look at that, even screenshots, for instance, right? So I will pull it up and show it to, to everyone if, if you want. Let's see, Beverly still adds some, some message about the fact that she doesn't follow the gut feeling that often, but honestly, it is usually right. And uh, usually, at some time, or most of the time, actually, uh, she has a gut feeling about a trade, but it doesn't mit, ma match the strategy or fit the strategy, so she doesn't take it. But most of the time, actually, the gut feeling is correct. That's great. That means that uh, you've built a lot of experience, you've looked at the charts often, and that experience is translating into a subconscious opinion. That's perfect. The problem is that if people do that too soon, they don't have that experience yet, and that subconscious is not translating kind of a subconscious experience, but a fear factor. But, but if, uh, if you have, if you see you know, that development, that's great. That means that you're really getting into uh, a good state where you're, you know, subconsciously, I think, at a, at a very good level. 
you know, you're, you're, you're looking at the charts and because when you look at the charts and you're incorporating and, and trading and looking at it every day or regularly, at least all of that isn't translating into experience or most of the time it, it should be, especially if you're very, very proactive in it. You know, if you're looking at the charts, thinking about what it could do and then checking what it did and learning from that, as I think, as I uh, know Beverly is doing, then that will translate into experience, which translates into uh, a subconscious kind of gut feeling about about trade. So if you use that gut feeling in combination with your strategy, that's a strong mix indeed. Excellent. Great job. So happy to hear that about Beverly. And uh, as I said, if anyone else wants to join the conversation next week, by all means, let me know. Wish you all great trading and talk to you soon. Cheers.